Hi everyone, my name is Lilia Moraes Schwartz. I am a Brazilian historian and anthropologist. I teach at University of Sao Paulo, the biggest public university of Latin America. I also teach at Princeton University. I started there 10 years ago as a global scholar, and now I work like as a kind of permanent visiting professor. I also work at MASP, Modern Art Museum of Sao Paulo, as a co-curator of histories. At the moment, I am researching the growth of authoritarianism in Brazil. On November 9th, 1989, I was working in Lisbon, in an archive in Lisbon, studying the long journey of the Royal Library. The Royal Library came to Brazil together with the Royal Family and stayed in Brazil and became, at that moment, in the beginning of the 19th century, the biggest national library in the Americas. Books are metaphors for freedom, as falling walls in Berlin are also very strong symbols of, symbol of freedom. I had two grandfathers from both sides of the family that were dilettante historians. I inherited older books in Italian, English, and French. That is why I wanted to be an historian, to remember things that most people want to forget. My research tries to break some heavy and thick walls. Since the beginning of 2019, Brazil has a new president, a very conservative one. Last May, I published on Brazilian authoritarianism, book that sold more than 40,000 copies uh, in Brazil so far, and was received as the first to be published since the beginning of the new government criticizing it. My name went straight to an informal list of opponents and enemies of the new government. I'm also a very active public intellectual. I, I, I have an Instagram account that, ha that started immediately after the last elections in Brazil and has more than 230,000 followers. I'm an intellectual writing and giving lectures on democracy, citizenship, fighting against racism in Brazil, misogyny, censorship, intolerance, corruption, and this year against the government denial of pandemic. One of the most important challenges of the book is to show how Brazilian, Brazilian present is completely full of its past. Another challenge is to show how Brazil was always, since colonial times, a very conservative country. It was the last one to abolish the slave system after United States, Cuba, and Puerto, Puerto Rico uh, received almost half of the Africans that uh, were obliged to, to leave his or her continent and naturalize the system with deep consequences nowadays. Brazil is also a country created by the language of latifundia that generated a profound hierarchy in the society. In the research, I visualized some solutions. It's necessary to diminish inequality in Brazil to give more funds to education, health, and infrastructure. We also need a national constitutional pact firmed by multiple sectors of our society. On Brazilian Authoritarianism was published six months after Jair Bolsonaro's election. The book is a historical review of the various forms of authoritarianism and their expression through Brazilian history. Slave system, patrimonialism, corruption, violence, inequality, intolerance.
part of Brazilian society was in shock with Jair Bolsonaro's first speeches and acts after 2018 elections. The book tries to give a political, economical, cultural, and social interpretation, going to the past and reaching the present. Lots of questions remain unanswered. The most important one is regarding the importance of religion, mainly in the growth of evangelical churches in the debate on authoritarianism in Brazil. I'm also studying how Amazon is part of the military and liberal ideology followed by Brazilian government. These are important questions that I'm trying to develop. My mother loved the book and the project, but at the same time, she was, was worried about political and personal consequences that I could deal with. But she is Italian and Jewish, so this is understandable. 